My name is Nate Haug, and I'm going to show you how to fork the backdrop repository and then submit a pull request back to the project. So to get started, the very first thing we need to do is we need to go to the backdrop repository and then fork the project. So we can do that by finding the backdrop repository and then clicking the fork button. And then we wait while GitHub copies the repository. And now we have our own fresh copy of the repository in our own GitHub account. So now that we've got this new repository, we can go down here to this uh, clone URL field. So we can copy that URL and then go to our own localhost computer. And then I'm just going to clone this into my desktop. So git clone and then that URL. And then Git will clone a local copy of it down to my computer. So now that that's done, we're ready to actually start making some changes to our copy of Backdrop. Before we do that, let's go and find an issue that we can work on from the Backdrop repository. So if we go back to the Backdrop project, and then go to the issue queue and then find an issue to work on. In this case we're going to work on this backporting issue which is going to add an HTML5 form API element email. So we go back to our repository and then we make a new branch. We do this by saying git checkout dash b for branch and since we're working on issue 108 we'll name it 108 slash new email field. So now we've checked out this new branch. Now what we need to do is make changes to the code, and you could do this by just changing the code locally, or in this case, I'm just going to um, be doing a straight up backport. So we're just going to be applying a patch uh, and then submitting it as a pull request. So I'm just gonna use curl to get that patch and then pipe it to git apply. And so what this has done is it's now made changes to my local copy of this repository. So now that I've made these changes to the site, uh, what I would do is I would then commit it to the project or commit it to my own local branch. So I'm gonna git commit and this is going to be uh, for issue 108. And the important thing to keep in mind is that when you create these commit messages exactly what you type into this commit message here is going to be what is in the commit message in the actual repository. There's no modifying of commit messages before they're merged. So whatever you type here will be exactly what is merged into the parent repository. So for that reason, it's really important to give good commit messages, uh, such as the, the issue that you're resolving and then a message saying what it is that you've done. So this is adding new HTML5 form API element email. So now I've made a commit to this new project. And if I look at my git status, I can see that uh, I'm on this, this branch, uh, 108 new email field, and that all of my changes have been committed. So now what I would normally do is I would push up to my origin uh, and then specifically say I would make a new branch on the origin by the same name. But what will end up happening here is that uh, currently since I just set up this new account on GitHub I don't yet have my SSH keys on the remote server. So in order to do that uh, I would go to my my profile page here, edit my profile and go to SSH keys uh, and then I would go to my, my own local computer here and go and pull up my uh, SSH key. And if you're not familiar with SSH keys, there's instructions right here at the top of the page uh, and add this new SSH key. Okay, now my new SSH key has been added. Uh, I can go back to my local machine and then I can push up this new change. 
So now I've pushed this new repository to my remote copy. So if I go back to my profile and go to backdrop, I can see that there should be a new branch in here for 108 new email field. So now with this new branch, I can click this button here for compare and review. And what this will do is it'll let you look at the visual diff of all of the changes that you've made in your repository. So in order to make an actual pull request, we click on this link right here. And then it automatically fills in that exact commit message or your latest commit message. So again, it helps if you have a good commit message to begin with. You also should make sure that you link the pull request with the associated issue. Currently, uh, we need to manually specify the URL for the original issue. So in this case, um, I would go and copy and paste that original issue and I say, uh, this solves this particular issue. And then hit send pull request. So now this pull request has actually been filed uh, against the back backdrop project. Before this possibly would even get merged in, what would need to happen first is it would need to pass, uh, pass the unit testing, which is done with Travis CI. After about a minute or two, uh, Travis CI will pick up the project and then make sure that it merges successfully. Okay, so after reloading a couple of times, I can now see that Travis CI has started the testing and it'll have this little yellow dot next to each commit message. And if I want to, I can go in, I can look at the individual details uh, on Travis CI. So we can see that Travis CI is in, in progress and is currently about to start running the tests. After the tests have all, are all finished, um, what should happen here is that you'll get a analysis of all of the tests as they're processing. Uh, and then once they've all completed, then the pull request will be marked green, meaning that it successfully both merges into the parent project and that all of the tests are passing. So the test usually takes about 20 minutes to run. So for now, we just have to wait. All right, well, after waiting a little while, we can see that Travis CI has now confirmed that all of the tests have passed. It's sometimes a good idea to look at the details here and check all of the individual tests. Uh, if there were any failures, you could see exactly what that failure was um, with some information about why it failed. If you do end up with a failure, then you can simply make another commit to the exact same pull request or to your, to your same branch, and the pull request will automatically be updated with your further commits. Even if it takes multiple commits on a particular pull request, then it's still a good idea to make sure that you include the issue number every single time on every single one of your commits. If it takes more than a couple of commits, it's a good idea to take all of your commits, um, make a new branch, and squash all of the commits together, and then submit a new pull request with just a single or a smaller number of commits. So now, uh, with this pull request filed, we've pretty much done our job. All that we need to do at this point is wait for a maintainer to come along and merge in merging the new changes.